name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. May the Lord who has begun this good work in us bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. In peace let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church, and for the uni unity of all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise. Let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory, Lord Jesus Christ, only Son. be with you. Let us pray. Stir up your power, O Lord, and come, that by your protection we may be rescued from the threatening perils of our sins and saved by your mighty deliverance. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading today is from Jeremiah 23, 5 through 8. Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, and he shall reign as king and deal wisely, and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In his days Judah will be saved, and Israel will dwell securely. 
and this is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. Therefore, behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when they shall no longer say, as the Lord lives who brought up the people of Israel out of the land of Egypt, but as the Lord lives who brought up and led the offspring of the house of Israel out of the north country and out of all the countries where he had driven them. Then they shall dwell in their own land. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle reading today is from Romans 13, 11 to 14. Besides this, you know the time that the hour has come for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we first believed. The night is far gone. The day is at hand. So then let us cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us walk properly as in the daytime not in orgies and drunkenness, not in sexual immorality and sensuality, not in quarreling and jealousy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provisions for the flesh to gratify its desires. This is the word of the Lord. Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 21st chapter. When they drew near to Jerusalem and came to Bethphage, to the Mount of Olives, then Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village in front of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, you shall say, The Lord needs them, and he will send them at once. This took place to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet, saying, Say to the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you, humble, and mounted on a donkey and on a colt, the foal of a beast of burden. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put on them their cloaks, and he sat on them. Most of the crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. And the crowds that went before him and that followed him were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest. This is the gospel of the Lord.
confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In the name of King Jesus, our eternal light and life. Amen. Please be seated. Advent, the first day, the first moment, the first hour. Advent is our time of preparing and preparing for our King. Not just celebrating the coming of a baby on December 25th. Advent is a season of waiting, a season of watching and preparing. The coming of Christmas is for most very exciting, not just for little ones. I'll have to admit it does seem just a little bit odd to see lights up well before Thanksgiving this year. However, even those who I know were stocking shelves with Christmas shipments at their store locations in July, I think some of this may be, rather than just making a dollar, is a good thing. That in the cold, dark winter, we're looking for light. We're looking for a reason to celebrate. I kind of like that we're leaning forward, even reaching forward. However, today, if you look around the sanctuary, there's not a whole lot of decoration. You see a little blue coming in and an advent wreath, but only one light that's glowing. Only one candle that is warm and has light coming from it. For those of us on this part of the globe, perhaps even up north in Alaska, talk to one of our LWML board of director gals up there. She said, you know, if I couldn't come down for a meeting once in a while, I think I'd go crazy up here because it's dark and cold. So very long. Lights, come. Lights, welcome. We need light, and we need light in our souls, not only our eyes. I'll invite you to look with me in Romans chapter 13 today, where the Apostle Paul helps prepare us and gets us ready for our king. There's more than one little light that's going But sometimes it seems so dark, so cold in our world. And God declares to us that truly, without him, though we realize it or not, we're in a very spiritually dark place. We only think of it when there's a high school or a school shooting. But the fact of the matter is true, that we carry darkness in our souls as well, that we were born into and born into a world of darkness. Our lives without God, the Bible teaches, are dark. Now, I will admit other religions use this metaphor of light and dark. We're not the only ones who have it. There are others all around educational institutions, and all other 
sorts of organizations that like the light. There's a Bud Light you could drink. There are all kinds of lights out there. But do you know of any other that have this foundation where the eyewitnesses of the true leader and source see him put to death and raised from the dead? Are there any other claims to light like this one? And so we have from the Gospel of Matthew, the king who is coming into Jerusalem. We're looking for prophecies of a baby before Christmas. But no, we need to understand the big picture of who this coming king is. I don't know of any other philosophy that can stand up to Christ, the God in flesh, who comes without a human father, only a heavenly one, suffers, dies, and is raised, as we will confess. But if you look at verse 11, Paul gets us ready for this. Paul prepares us. Paul helps us to see what's going on. When he says, besides this, you, you know the time that the hour has come for you first to wake up from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we first believed. darkness. The night is far gone. The day is at hand. So then let us cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor or the instruments a light. We need it in our souls, not just out there and around us, but, but in us. Spiritual darkness involves what is done at night in hiding. The things of which we should be ashamed. The things that should lead us to bow, to fall down in repentance before the Savior, before the King who's coming, before God who is a consuming fire of light and judgment. Our old nature and this old world can't see it. And sometimes we're so desensitized also that we can't realize anymore the sinful habits that have become a part of us and how much we need a Savior still today. We need spiritual light in the truth that comes from above, from the Creator, from the Giver of light, the One who said, let there be and it came, and it is, because He is. We need a wake-up call from our spiritual darkness of sin along with the world around us. So on this first Sunday of Advent, and then I'll include Wednesday night this week, if you can join us at 6.30, it will be the, the only service where it's dark outside in the evening before Christmas Eve. And we will pray and even sing and learn to sing and pray this prayer together. Jesus Christ is the light of the world. The light that no darkness can overcome. Here is light that we need. He comes to us. Have you found this? Sometimes you sleep so hard that it's difficult to wake up and you're a little disoriented. And even after you get up, if you haven't set out clothes the night before, which I used to do when I had the 5, 5 a.m. wake-up call to leave for work by 5.30, which I do not today. <laughs> If I didn't set something out the night before, I'm kind of bumbling around. It's still a little dark in the house. And at this point in time, I didn't want to wake up Beth and the kids. So I didn't turn on too many lights, trying to make it through the shower and get on the freeway before I got stuck in traffic. Finding the right thing to wear wasn't always so easy if I didn't set them out and have them ready to go. 
But thankfully, this time God's got you covered. Now, on Sunday morning, I just look around and you all look as if you're dressed so nicely, beautifully. I'm wearing beautiful blue today <laughs> to celebrate Advent. And some of you like to dress up, like to dress up for church. I'm guessing it's primarily the gals, but I bet some of you gals are already thinking about what you're going to wear at Christmas. We love dressing up for important events. And it's beautiful that you do so, or those of you who like to do so, it's a, for some of you, it's a special form of your own worship and coming into God's house. Not that it's required, but you want to. God does have you covered in your baptism. And so Paul calls us to get ready in this way. If you would look at verses 13 and 14 with me, let us walk properly as in the daytime, not in the ways of the night, including quarreling and jealousy, which comes so naturally from our old nature. But verse 14 says, the end of our text, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. Verse 12 said, put on the armor of light, which could also be translated just instruments, the vehicles, the tools. What are the tools of light? Well, it's certainly God's word. And it's God word, God's word as well, thankfully, combined with water and today with bread and wine. These are instruments that bring us light we who are by nature dark and in spiritual darkness of sin, God gives us a new robe. That's why the pastor today and elder and acolyte were all wearing robes signifying what God gives us. However, the robe he gives is not just an outer garment. It's a robe of righteousness. Why is Jesus headed to Jerusalem? You know the end of this story. He has to go to the cross. He has to be nailed and shed his blood so that we would be washed clean. We sang today in the song, who can ascend this holy hill? Those who have their hands washed clean and their hearts pure. We can't get that ourselves. And so in baptism, God's word comes and he, he gives you and puts upon you this garment of not only a white robe, but one that is so brightly illuminated that it bears the glory of God because it's his holiness, the righteous branch that was prophesied by Jeremiah is the babe in the manger and the babe who will go to a cross. God gives us this light. And it's not as if baptism is no good and you get, need to get a new one each day, but, but to return to that place where you are washed clean, where your hands are made clean and your heart is made new and made pure. This darkness cannot put out the light that comes, the very Son of God who would take all sin upon himself, who in such a strange way would shed blood to wash our robes, blood that seems to stain everything terribly, in this case makes us clean. This baptismal clothing can now be taken up by you who are in faith in Christ daily, putting aside the works of the world, your old nature, and all those ways that are dark. And thankfully, he gives us with this robe a new heart that compels us to love one another, love that fulfills the law because Christ fulfilled the law and gives you his holiness. We celebrate light we're heading into the dark season, but we're headed there with God's light. 
with the truth of who Jesus Christ really is. The law no longer threatens with condemnation, but now the law shines with God's glory because of Christ who kept it fully and, a, and, and takes your dirty garments and replaces them with his holy, shining, glowing, and magnifying beautiful robe of Christ's righteousness. God sees all that Jesus has done and ascribes it as yours, that you are holy in his sight. And then he gives, your, his, gives us his spirit so that we're prompted not just out of what we have to do or supposed to do, but now a new desire to love one another with the light of Jesus Christ. Dear friends, you look great wearing the light of Christ, the holiness of Christ. The king of light has come and he is coming. He is faithful to sustain and complete his perfect work in us until we're ready to meet him face to face. Put his garment on daily. Put his garment on as you come to his table and are touched with the very body and blood of Christ. Put his garment on in all that he has done because he makes you his own, white and clean. When he comes in light, there and then, we'll all be able to see this glorious light reflected from him and in each other. In his name, we look for his light to come. King Jesus, the light in our king. Amen. So now the peace of God that passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ until he comes to life everlasting. Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Dear friends, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen.